Hello and welcome again. In the last video on teaching listening, we looked at the differences between reading and listening and we looked at top-down processing. In this video, we're going to have a look at bottom-up processing and give you some practical ideas for how you could implement this in the classroom too. So what are the features of a listening text? What do we actually hear? Well, first, sounds, and those are made up of phonemes, such as s, t, and morphemes, such as ing or id. And then the next level, of course, is words. And then the level after that is groups of words. So these might be collocations, chunks of language, sentences then, obviously, and then the whole text. So this sounds simple enough, but of course there are some problems for learners. So what problems do they have? Well, one of the big ones is with connected speech. English has some serious problems with this. So I'm going to give you a word. This is an English word, I promise you. And I'd like you to tell me what word it is. Uh. That is an English word. And of course, I'm sure you understood that it was this word, a bottle of wine. Uh. OK, I'm going to give you a different English word. This one says, uh. It's not the same word, it's a different word and it is an English word. And I'm sure you understood that it was this word. I should have got up early. Uh. I'll give you another English word a different English word. And guess what it says? Uh. This time I'm quite sure that what you heard was this. Are you coming? Uh. And I've got another one for you. And guess what this one says? Yes, it says uh. And this time I'm sure that you understood that it was this word. It's a great place. So you can see that this is a real problem for learners. Lots of English words, especially common function words such as prepositions, articles, pronouns, auxiliaries, these have weak forms and they might sound very different to what a learner expects to hear. So they're expecting to hear of or have or are or a ah, and actually what they hear is a. Uh. So, you know, this is difficult, of course. There are other problems with connected speech. Look at this word. What do you expect to hear? Handbag. But what you actually hear is handbag. With this one, you have to imagine there's twice as many. It's not 10 bottles, it's 10 bottles. It sounds like a mm sound, 10 bottles, because your mouth's getting ready to say the b sound. So things like this cause trouble for learners because they're not hearing what they're expecting to hear. Things like this are used as jokes, but actually the way the word boundaries lie is much closer to this than it is to that. Try this one out. This is a fairly accurate portrayal of what's said, but clearly it makes no sense. But if you stop me a minute, try saying it a few times to yourself, you might hear something different. This is the kind of thing that learners are up against. And the problem is that once you think you've heard meter or nex, then it's quite, you try to process that in a top down way and make sense of it. And obviously you can't because it doesn't make any sense because that's not actually what you heard. In 2009, John Fields published this book and it's one I'd really recommend. But it's based on research that he'd done into bottom-up processing. And he suggests an approach that gives learners intensive practice in exercises to improve this. Now, I can't show you all of these things here, but I'll give you a flavour of it and give you some ideas. So one of the best tools for this is just simple dictation. Remember, this isn't about spelling. It's about improving people's listening skills and making them more aware of what they're listening to. 
So if you regularly dictate short sentences like this to your learners, it can really help to raise their awareness of those connected speech issues, especially with common function word sequences. Where are you from? Where are you from? I couldn't have done it better myself. Couldn't have done it better. So couldn't have done it, done it. Could I, could I, could I, could I have a bitter, a bitter butter, a bitter butter. So these kind of things help them to understand that these exist so they won't be so thrown by them. You can also raise awareness of word boundary issues this way. So come along with me, it's a long way. Clearly they sound the same, but they're not. My sister's got a terrible teacher. She doesn't teach her anything. So again, these two things sound the same, but they're not. She won't belong. She doesn't belong. Another useful exercise, and one that's great fun actually, is to dictate a short sentence and ask the learners to try to guess how many words there are, to count how many words there are in that sentence. So here's one example. How much longer is it going to take you? So how much longer's, longer is, longer's it gonna, going to, going to, gonna take you? Nine words. Another example. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. I suppose we will, we'll just have to, have to, wait and see. Wait and see, it all comes together. So you can see that they're going to have trouble to listen to these things, but it does help. If you get them to listen, obviously on their own, then confer with a partner and try and guess and try and reconstruct the sentence, and then give it to them. They usually find that quite entertaining. The secret with this kind of work, of course, is little and often. If you do too much of it, it can really get tedious. But a short burst of it on a, on a frequent basis is interesting and fun and the learners will start to notice that they benefit from it because they'll start to understand more about these connected speech issues. So it will make a difference if you include a bit in each lesson. So what's the best strategy for improving your learners' listening skills? So there are lots of different opinions on this. Some people feel that extensive listening to things that learners like is the best way forward to motivate them to want to listen. Others think that these bottom-up strategies that we've just been talking about are important. And others think that actually we should just develop better language skills. If they've got more vocabulary, they'll be able to understand more. As is often the case, I think, all of the above are important and they're all part of the picture. So how you do this practically in class and how you mix these things together, of course, will depend on you and on your learners. But it is worth thinking about how those things do fit together in your strategies of teaching listening and not just practicing it perhaps. Well, I hope that's been of some interest and has made you think about how you teach listening skills. Try some of those short exercises out with your learners and see how it goes. I hope it works well for you. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.